happening everybody street here welcome back to the channel welcome back to the staying stories welcome back to the shenanigans that are what i produce now in all street 707 fashion the lighting is horrible it's early friday morning we're driving on our way to work decided it was time to have a discussion with you guys we just rolled 10,000 miles in the Stang, and we've owned the car now for over a year. So what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is just a general overview of different items that have arose with the car over the last year, what has happened in the first 10,000 miles, and I wanna briefly summarize what has gone down with the car and the tick. I have gotten an obscene amount of attention on the tick videos lately. A lot of new subscribers, a lot of new viewers have come in and they're asking all these questions about the tick that I've basically covered. And I wanna do like a general overview of the car and the tick, what mods I've done to the car, what mods I have planned for the near future. And just, you know, overall one year kind of overview slash review items. So let's start off with the few items that have kind of popped up in the first year before we get into the whole tick saga and just a brief overview of what has happened within the first year. Before we get into all that though, let me just give my quick thanks and appreciations to everybody in the community who has contributed to the channel, who watch videos, who like, comment, you know, share. Everybody's continued support. I thank you very much. Briefly, I did not hit my goal of 50 total products sold on Teespring. So I wanna let everyone know, if you guys are interested in some Mustang swag, go ahead and click the link and go onto my Teespring shop and pick up some Mustang gear. I appreciate it. My goal has been to sell 50 total products. We're not there yet and uh, I would love to make that milestone happen. So hit up my Teespring shop. Okay, real quick, let's do an overview of the car before we get into the issues that have arose. Just way, that way everybody can kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about. I have a 2018 Mustang GT Premium with the Performance One package. It has the active exhaust, which I have turned on quiet right now so I can talk to you guys and you can hear me. It has the MagnaRide suspension. It also has the Shaker Pro audio and it has the 401A package, which is navigation, the 12 inch cluster display, and a couple other little tidbits. I kind of forget everything that that package included. But basically what I like to say is it is a fully lit Mustang GT. So the first issue to arise with the car was this air message that I was getting on the 12 inch cluster display. It said something in, in the line of, the tire monitoring system was something or other, and it, it would pop up when you start the car, and then it would never go away. So what I had to do is I had to bring the car into the dealership and have them reflash the firmware on the screen, um, or wherever they reflash it. They reflashed it, and the problem went away and has never popped up since. So that was nice. It was an annoyance. It, it wasn't some detrimental thing. It was just an annoyance. The next thing that popped up was this gnarly, gnarly rattle in the rear passenger side bezel, like the, the bezel between the rear windshield right here. You can see it, that guy right there. Between the rear little triangular window and the rear windshield, it was gnarly. Every time you'd hit like something that would kind of jerk the car, it sounded like a screw in a metal housing that was like clinking, like clack, 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 clack. It, it was the most annoying thing I ever heard. I was like, I did not buy this car to have this sound while I was driving. So I brought it in, they replaced it under warranty, no problem. Now, up until that point, it was all it was all fun and games. It was all okay. It was just minor annoyances. We got them all fixed, no big deal. These happened within the first 2,000 miles of the car. At about 2,200 miles, the nasty tick showed its face. Now I'm gonna go over these so quick, so I need you guys to keep up. I'm not gonna get into the long story form of these, just I'm gonna hit the points and we're gonna move on. So the tick showed its face at 2,200 miles. I brought it into the dealership. I said, hey, ticking. They said, we'll look at it. 
They looked at it, didn't hear anything. They told me, come pick up my car. When I started my car in the parking lot, I said, yo, I can hear it ticking right now. So I brought out the service advisor and the service manager. And I said, you guys need to listen to this. This is ridiculous. I want you guys to solve this problem. They came out, they acknowledged they heard the tick. That was the beginning of the saga. Many of you guys have followed the saga on YouTube. Thank you for your support. It was a pain in the ass time in my life. We got through it. We're enjoying the car now. So I picked up the car, still ticking. They said, bring it back and we'll kind of evaluate it overnight. We'll do a cold start. We'll see if we can figure it out. I brought it back. About three weeks later, they had replaced the cam phasers. They said, cam phasers are right, man. Replaced it, not ticking anymore. Come pick up your car. I went to pick up my car. Take it away. Tick, 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 tick. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> so I was like, you guys, this thing's ticking like crazy out here. You guys, like, what happened? And they were like, oh, well, okay, bring it back. We'll, uh, we'll take it in again. We'll look at it in a little more depth. So they looked at it. They stethoscoped it. They did all kinds of things. They said, you know what? It's on the top of the motor. It's on the passenger side. We're going to replace the passenger head and the passenger cams. So that's what they did. They had the car for about two weeks. I picked it back up. Still ticking. <laughs> said, you guys, still ticking like crazy, man. Um, we need to figure this out. So they said, okay, well, you're pre-approved for a long block. Um, you know, you want to leave it here. It's probably going to take a couple of months. We'll get it done. And I was like, no, you know what? You guys have had my car longer than I've owned it. I want to enjoy my car. This was my dream car. I worked my ass off for this car. I want to enjoy it for a little bit. Let's let the car break in a little with these new parts and see where it goes from there. So we got the car back. We drove it. The very next day, the battery died. So I had to get the car jumped like three or four times in like 24 hour period. So I brought it back to Ford. I said, dude, the battery is dead. And I think what happened was it just sat so long and did so much, gone through so much testing that it just, the battery went funky and the battery went bad. So we replaced the battery under warranty, all good. And I drove the car for probably two, 3,000 miles and then brought it in to get an oil change. I asked Ford, I said, you know what? That says 5W20, uh, it says 5W30 in the manual for track. And what do you guys recommend here at Ford for the car? So they put 5W50 in it. They said, we should definitely put 5W50. And I was like, wow, dude, that's really serious oil. So they said, with a performance motor like this, 5W50 is the way to go. I said, okay, well, you, you guys know what you're talking about. So I guess that is what it is. So it's had 5W50 in it for 3,000 miles now, and it's still ticking gloriously. Now there is a thing with the oil that it kind of ticks a lot worse in the beginning, right after an oil change, it ticks really, really bad. And then as the oil dirties up, it gets less and less and less. So we kind of go from there as it, it comes and it goes. It, it's not like a consistent tick all the time. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's you know not as bad. It just is what it is. Now. The whole service bolt in 7718 came out saying that they're not gonna attempt to fix this sound anymore. My car does not tick at cold start like some years does. My car only ticks when the engine heats up to a normal operating temperature. So that's where I stand now. Um, I have not tried Ceratec, I refuse. It just, it's been proven to work for a short period of time then comes back. Um, I am not planning on bringing the car back in to argue with them about getting the motor replaced. If the motor fails, they'll replace it. I am heavily documented on this issue and I have the um, original saga of tick videos and documentation on YouTube that has benefited many people and has also started, you know, has also encouraged many people to start theirs. Now, I was very, very butthurt on this whole issue in the beginning. I'm not so worried about it anymore. I'm just enjoying my car as I think you should as well. Document it, get it in the record, and then just, you know, enjoy. Wait, wait and see what happens. I don't know what else to tell you from there. Now, what I have done to the car is I have put an X pipe on it.
best mod ever. I love the X-Pipe. If you guys haven't seen some of my impression videos or some of my mini videos on Instagram or YouTube showcasing the X-Pipe with active exhaust, go ahead and check those out. I have lowered the car on Steeda Magnari lowering springs. Um, it is the perfect accessory for a Magna Ride. This car freaking handles phenomenally, and it is absolutely amazing. I love it. The other thing that I've done is put a high flow fuel filter in it, which just definitely increased my miles per gallon, which I appreciate. And um, that's pretty much it. I plan on getting the car tinted here shortly. I plan on getting the, perform or the uh, Ford Performance Power Pack coming hopefully in September. And other than that, we're gonna do some cosmetic things. I do have the GT350 Track Pack spoiler on the way, so we'll be doing an install video on that soon. And that's basically all I got for you guys today, man. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for catching up with me and all the new viewers. I appreciate you guys. Go back. There is a backlog of videos for you to check out and we're moving forward, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at silverstake 707 if you guys want more content on the car. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.